beginning podcast. We're here with Thomas Creighton. Three years to the day that we're riding the World Cyclocross Championships. Your, trip. What, yours was that trip. day as well, yeah? Um, no, mine was day before, I think. Well, three years anyway. Uh, we're actually just sitting watching here uh, a couple of videos that I have taken on YouTube when I was into the, the vlogging back then. And uh, we're trying to, trying to rem remember it. What's the word? It's a big off camber right here. I, I took some prisoners, so it did. So Thomas, Thomas is, I would say, up and coming. What age are you now? I'm 20. 20, still up and coming. Um, you've, what age did you start racing at? You've came, you've 12, done, I think I started when I was 12, the wee cyclocross race in Lauren. You've done the whole come up through mountain biking and then transition yeah. over to the road. Yeah, but Which, I, mean, yeah. I don't think I'll ever roll mountain bike out, out. Oh, seriously, yeah? Yeah, still definitely think there's some work to do there. Yeah, a couple of boxes to tick. Mm -hmm, definitely. I see, the, um, I see they're actually calling out for guys, the, the run races. We're actually thinking of something, but we need to get... Yeah, it's hard. See, the thing was last year, all mountain bike races were cancelled. Yeah. If you nothing on, so it's very hard to carry that momentum through from... You know, nearly two years ago now, where you last had your mountain bike racing. So it was actually my plan. I bought the mountain bike last year and planned to do mountain bike racing yeah. only. Did two at the start of the season, and then that was it, all over. But um, yeah, Thomas has rode for us, guest ridden for us, once, wasn't it? Twice, mm. nearly it three day. Th nearly three day, and then the next year was Tour of the North. That's right. Remember me, Monday guest rode. Mm -hmm. Big Vic Joyce was there as well. I ended up only doing like two days of that, then. No, you did. did I, on your last day, you did the big Superman. That's front. right. That's right. Big effort in the front. I uh, was funny. Monday was just like to be glance off the front. That was funny. And then um, sitting at the side <laughs> for five months. I uh, seen you seen inside the room for Rugby. So that was three years ago. We 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 did the cyclocross. You've sort of transitioned over it as well, and you've went well at it. You mm -hmm. were you were up in the mix at we ran a UCI race, and you were in the mix there. So like you're not you're not shy of the cyclocross either. Yeah, well, cyclocross is good for the winter. Like, um, if you're not doing racing over the winter, you know if you're doing your base training, it can be a very long winter. Yeah. And cyclocross definitely good to to keep you sharp, to keep the keep the power up, keep the intensity up. That's, that's why I like cross. How did you do in that? You share race? You were on the max, weren't you? Fourth. Fourth. Who's, yeah. Who's third? Rain Boyd got me in the sprint. Oh, that's right. Yeah. My yeah. excuse is my gears clogged up, so right. we'll just leave it at that. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, I have a couple of bullet points here. Last year, what was the plans? You're still you're still under twenty three then, obviously. Yeah. And did you plans last year that the COVID ruled out? I, I mean, to be honest, I'm not an established road rider at all. So the plan was just to get as much experience Another. on the road as possible. Just you know, get the races under my belt, get the miles under my belt. Um, COVID did disrupt that a bit, but. Thanks to the likes of Navin Road Club, boys like that, we did get racing last summer, yeah. which was good. Because well, there's a couple of boys now, the likes of some of the juniors will have missed a second year, like a full year of racing. Like, I think yeah. that's how it really impacted yeah, it. Yeah. Boys who, you know, your second year junior can be the biggest season to, to develop and yeah. to get opportunities, open up doors. And if you miss that whole season, it can really be so detrimental to your career. There's a couple of boys now have just went from under 16, a, a year junior. And they're going to be under twenty three, yeah. so there's not much of a jump for them. So, had you any any trips away planned or anything like that, or oh, nothing really planned? Um, I had I had in my head that I wanted to sort of get back to the mountain biking a bit more, just in the bigger races, you know, the likes of the Irish rounds and the British rounds. But of course, all of that was cancelled. You've done a couple of British rounds, haven't you, in the mountain bike? Yeah, oh, I've raced British rounds four seasons now, I think. And that's with XMTB and then you're now uh, with McCombies. It was it XMTB, seven? yeah, and then I was riding with McCombies and then when I was riding with McCombies it was the Ulster squad. You okay, go yeah. with over to Yeah, it seems to be a good group of guys, they're all looking after each other and stuff. Mm, yeah. uh, they really brought the quality of the Ulster squad on over the last few years with them. And so going back to the McCombie setup, what's what's the score there? What's happened this year? You see they brought on a couple of other riders? Uh, the, um It'll be me and Michael again on the road. Of course, mm -hmm. Michael will be doing the triathlon again as well. He's very strong there. I think Laura Wiley's on board again doing yeah. the triathlon on the road. Then my sister Erin, she'll be That's right, she's racing the road. Her and the wee girl Amelia, they're both riding well, both strong riders. Um, Brendan Flanagan's on the team, yeah, very yeah. talented rider. He's top 10 at Euros in the past on the road. and He's away in America at the minute, uh, working like a ski shop. So oh, okay. 
he's there for seven months or so and he can't come home because of the whole COVID situation. So it's not messing much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, we'll see what happens with him next year. But yeah, we won't see him so for a long while. You'll not be gas riding for us then this year? Uh, well, we never know. Um, don't know about it. don't know what the plans are this year. Of course, the big goals would be Tour the North and Tour Ulster to put teams in. But I don't know if they're going to happen. Good question mark, yeah. Because yeah. we're like, f- what are we, five weeks out from... The, the first sort of week race but it's already now being cancelled yeah so I think it races that are scheduled to take place in March and April I think will either be cancelled or scheduled daily later date in the season but the thing is you can only reschedule so many races yeah well we could do the ECI and compress everything in three, three <laughs> yeah. months you know yeah do three races a week or something like that and then McConvey's in and they look they have, they have a sort of well I wouldn't say a summer set up to us but something you know like it's a club that is through the, the shop mm-hmm um, and Lance and stuff works after and there's there's a lot of s- staff there's, what would you say staff sort of helpers in the background there that don't get a lot of recognition yeah. Jeff isn't it I big Jeff yeah. Valentine he's always a big help at the bigger races the likes yeah. of uh, the Ulsters and the Irish Champs he's always there lending a hand he's also Chief Caterer so that's right races, that's right you know you'll have Jeff's sausage rolls and special coffees to keep you going a wee bit of a kick in someone yeah. hasn't there yeah 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 <laughs> I think it'll be pretty strong sometimes um, Lance has always been sort of the focal point of the yeah, team yeah. he's the one responsible for getting boys on looking after them of course Eamon he's, he's the main sponsor like he does a lot for us all we, we do have to thank him for that yeah and I know it works well yeah just the dads in the background my dad oh, Eddie right. Boyd likes of the lads they all put a lot of hard work in he broke his collarbone did he? Did he? Or did it? Yeah, that's what you don't know. I'm not sure. I, I heard, heard a rumor that I broke the collar. I haven't it? heard from him in a while. I don't know what he's doing at this time of year. He'd be up at the t- front of the cross races, so I think he's riding his mountain biking a lot in Tallymore. But I'm if he's broke his collar, he shouldn't be. I went out with him and Thomas during lockdown, and geez, they tell them wrong me out. Like oh, they they spend their lives in Tallymore. Yeah, yeah. So they either some operators in the mountain bikes. Like. Oh, yeah, some job. So everything's good at the McConvies. So it is. Um, we were talking there just as you came into the shop. We were talking a wee bit about Swift. Mm-hmm. How did you get on last night, Brian? It's that's the only thing that to, to talk about it. I know, it's literally the only thing happening. Um, round three last night. Round three. See, to be honest with you, I've never been very good at Swift. I'll hold my hand up and say it. I'm not gonna make any excuses. Um, last night I did all right actually. I was fifteenth and I was six seconds off the winner. Um, David O'Sullivan. Well, last night, um, I think Swift is brilliant for knocking your pan in, getting that serious high intensity stuff and just holding a strong, constant effort. But the big thing I will say is don't take Swift racing seriously. It's a computer game and it's not real life. Yeah. Have a uh, bit of crack, as, suffer. But as Jim was saying, I was beating myself up a bit last week, going, "Jeez!" And then, well, in fairness, now it made me actually get out in the real world. I did a bit of training this week <laughs> as, as opposed to just riding Swift this week and sort of. I was like, right, okay, let's go and actually try and do real world in mind. So I actually went and did hill reps for the first time on Monday. I uh, can, to be fair, Swift can be a bit of a motivator. You know, you've got the league table there. There's a leader's jersey sponsored by Dally's High End yeah. Guy that good old Ross Blaney's been organising. So, like, it can be motivating for people, you know, to get up that just leaderboard as high as they can. But, yeah. yeah, you just, you can't get too flustered with it. Well, I'm not in the first page, so it's it's my doubt, it's my doubt the window. <laughs> no, like. Neither am I, so I don't think I'll be getting that jersey. And then you've the likes of Darnell and a couple of the other boys in it as well, and I think they're just sort of, well, my opinion is they're just sort of taking over on it at the moment. I, I think boys are just using it to get a bit of stimulation, you know, a bit of race stimulation because we don't know how long it's going to be until we get that again. So you know, getting on Swift, racing against other people, you know, it can be good to keep you motivated. And then once once COVID. Plan, once we're out of the lockdown then what's the plan just trying to get around a few races and see where form is and yeah I think to be honest with the amount of uncertainty that comes with Covid I don't I don't think you'd be wise to make any big plans because you don't know if anything's yeah. going to go ahead you don't know if teams are going to be sent anywhere no. I think the best thing you can do is get as much racing as you can under your belt no, we, have a, we have a couple of things lined up it's like but when, when, do, you, when do you start the process like there's a charity spin that we're looking at organising it's June and then we've there's a couple of cyclocross dates to start. Well, mm-hmm. we've already put them in for, but the likes of guys wanting to organise mountain bike races or even road races, I don't know what, when they're gonna. It's just, I think, because of the uncertainty, you'll see a lot of cancellations because boys, yeah, you could run a race, but is it gonna be profitable? 
yeah, you know yeah. you just you just don't know and i think a lot of people don't want to take the risk of losing money so i yeah. think you will see a lot fewer races this year again well fingers crossed we got a sort of cyclocross plan now we had planned to go to holland wasn't we do a race in holland every year um but we're sort of re juggling things this year because the the master cyclocross are over in ipswich mm -hmm. um so are you planning to maybe travel for cyclocross Hopefully, yeah. See, so, um, we've got a van now, which makes life a lot easier. So you know, hopping on the ferry, getting over to the continent yeah. would be a lot handier. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, family van or team van or both? Family van oh, or well, both. You you never know. Maybe Eamon will give us a van, but stick a couple of stickers on. <laughs> exactly, but I'll be hope I'll hopefully be in full time employment when that when Cross comes around again. You know, hopefully I've graduated and be in a job. So we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. There's one of the rounds is up switch and then there's another one we're looking at. It was, it wasn't the one on the beach. It was Ernst, Ernst Town or something, Urbanstown. Urbanstown. Yeah, 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 it's the one on the beach, isn't it? I in um, Scotland. Yeah, yeah. So we rode that one out. Did that uh, last time it was on. It's just, it's basically a road race. Extremely so come, fast. Come back to the end, the cyclocross ones, which was, um, you'd sort of you'd won the Irish champs a few weeks before. Mm -hmm. As a junior? Yeah, second year junior. Second year junior. And then you'd beat, what was that fella's name in second? Archie Ryan. Archie Ryan, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's not really big in the sport, like, no, you wouldn't no. really know him. He's I'll have to line him up for an Sort of an un interview. underground figure, Archie, so he is. And then Adam, he was uh, third that day. I Adam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was third. Um, both of those lads were riding strong that year, like, when it came to the Worlds, you know, or even riding Higgerhide in the Worlds, we were all very close <laughs> together, but... Archie seems to have gone the way of pro on the road, and yeah, I think he's built for climbing, isn't he? Yeah, he's very strong on the climbs. I remember from racing with him at the Tour of the North, he, he ripped it up there. Um, don't know about Adam. Haven't seen him on a bike in a while. I think he may hit the retirement stage, but you never know. Adam has take taken breaks before, and he's come back and he's been very strong. So yeah. you know he just goes in the full yeah, tilt, doesn't he's he? He's a very high caliber rider. So yeah, we've done the the we had stayed them for a week in. Belgium and some wasn't a chalet, but it was sort of like a like a farmhouse. Uh, I was it was a weird it was a good setup like but it was just it was it was it was a weird sort of house like like a the, dorm sort of thing. It was yeah, cold. It was, it was, was like, cold yeah, and it was damp, but then like it was again, a dorm that was, like yeah, yeah, you wouldn't really say it was a house, but the only place yeah. to get heat was to lie on bed with a couple of people. <laughs> I day. know, yeah. Archie usually snuggled up with Davy Conroy. What was, so the game? Did. what was the game? Well, it wasn't Fortnite, was it? Oh no! Um, was that Wee Rose survival game? Like pub, pub or something? Yeah. Pub G or something? Yeah, yeah. And like, I was actually getting messages from Andy Lay saying, "Can you make sure the boys are off the off the games?" <laughs> and I was like, "Hang on, I, Bradley yeah. hadn't found Fortnite at this stage." And then I was getting. Uh, there was a few nights they came in and the table was supposed to be set and we were lying in bed playing video games. Yeah. I don't think they were too happy. And then I got home. Bradley goes, "Daddy, some guy called Archie's added added me on uh, the PlayStation." And I was going, "Yeah." Go you play with the kids, Bradley? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The wee boys. So we had a good week, and then we did the, the hooker hide course that, the week before its prep. Mm -hmm. Um, now it was alright for me because I was the only senior in the race, so like I didn't have as much pressure on as you did. And that was yeah. the whole thing with with if I was to pick teams, it would be like one junior, one senior, because you do have this pressure of you're racing amongst yourselves. But I was actually looking through the, the videos there. You were actually well up at the start. Of the Hooker Hide Wheel, so what was his name? Martin. Martin Eden. Martin Eden came over as well. But yeah, that Hooker Hiding course was. I think what helped me was uh, being national champion. Yeah, you Brought with it a few UCI points, which yeah. got you up the grid a bit more. Yeah, there was a big off camber section on the bank. I'll throw these videos on. Uh, that, was a good, that was a good course, it was very fast. Recon and the infamous steps. Um. But yeah, you you went well that weekend. You could you couldn't describe that that course to people. It's just uh, super what, fast. Like the continental courses are completely different to what we get at home. Look. Like. Yeah, which we've we've we have tried to change. We are in that sort of direction that we are we are changing. How can I where's how can I? And that's right. We actually, we also then went down to the the second iron course as well. Got our eyes open there, trying to get kit. <laughs> so it is. That was a whole hoo ha as well. Um, yeah, that was the start up over the big bridge. There's me talking nonsense. But uh, yeah, and then that week then, you still had a couple of training spins that week. I came home. Uh, I had to go home for a uni like, entrance exam. So I had to fly, I think I flew home on the Tuesday and was back on the Thursday or the Wednesday night maybe. There was definitely a lot of travelling, but yeah, it was well set up. Because yeah. then I had Donald Ran. 
I uh, Big Dono was a big help. We Andy Lay, who sort of organised the whole thing, put yeah. a lot of work in. We'd Martin Eden over. He was that sort of like rider coach sort of thing, and then we had a few. I think who else was there? Was Aaron Bain. Aaron Bain. Aaron Bain's, Aaron Bain's was brilliant mechanics. Yeah. Who it was um, brilliant setup, and then Lars' mum as well. Lars' mum, yeah, she she was very good as yeah. well, looking after us. So she was. But Everyone just sort of chipped in. Was I, that was that. That was the best setup I think yeah, I've, yeah. I've seen on an Ireland team on the off road like. No, I think the year after then, where was the where does that? The year yeah. after was Norway. Did they put the team into that? Or no, not Norway. Sorry, it's Denmark. I um, Magar went again, and Conroy went again, and Big Sean Nolan went. And it was just a else go? bit reduced. There was, there's been no seniors since I went, so there hasn't yeah, been. We're sort of. We're lacking in the seniors. Yeah, we are. I think we're waiting for the people just to come up through the ranks. Get, get a bit older. Yeah, well, Conroy's senior now, so... Was he? He well, he didn't race this year because of the whole COVID situation. There was a second arm didn't send a team, but... Even though, yeah. he, was, even though he was still there, like... For next for next year, like, he'll he'll be the senior rider. And then, yeah, he, that race then was... It was just better cold. It was too cold to snow. Oh, it was... World was brittle, like, it was... I don't know... What I've only seen the it was, but it was minus something anyway. And it was just a mud slog, uh, a lot of running. Yeah, anyone who complained about Ballina National yeah, yeah. Champs should have been at uh, Valkenberg. Like, uh, there was there was one rut, um, maybe about two minutes after the start. It was a big long left hander. Mm-hmm. And we just, well, I just couldn't get it. And the course just got progressively yeah. worse through the weekend. I mean, the first time I rode, I thought it was pretty good, but then. It just got destroyed to the point where you were running more than half of it. Yeah. I mean, you, you had the start straight, you had the wee sort of technical bit, which you were able to ride, and then you got into sort of like the main arena yeah. sort of part, and it was yeah, yeah. literally all just running from there. There's that, that rut there, big left hand. That was just crazy. And like the, the pros are just uh, real and they're riding not even it. unclipping, like they're just straight through. And then we had the, the leprechauns were over. Oh, the. All the carry men. Oh, that was. Those boys made the trip, so they did. Richard Mays, Richard Mays, running down the course, and I think he ended up in Eurosport. Then falling under the barrel. Like he, yeah. he was a world star after that. Like I well, think that was the highlight of the weekend for most people who were there. If you're on the YouTube, we'll fire the video. I'll download the video and fire it on. Um, but yeah, there was a lot great support, and I think because the team, that was the sort of first time there was a big team that went yeah. over. Thanks, to that, sort of Andy Lee. Put a lot of work into it, um, so we did. So we had a lot of supporters. There always is. The, a lot of guys go oh, to the races. Was a, there was a big Irish contingent there in terms oh, yeah. of support. Like there was a big Irish team and a lot, a lot of Irish fans. Really, really made for a good, a good week. So it yeah. did. So they went over to that, and um, yeah, it was good. good, good I haven't really that. seen a team that sort of size since. No, that's been um, the biggest. There was two vans, wasn't there? Yeah, two, two, two vans. Hopefully, hopefully that's something we can. Well, that's work to get back to in coming years because there's a lot of good riders coming through the ranks. So that's where I first got to know yourself, then, and then, it, and then obviously Adam, like Adam, came off with a, with a statement. You know, oh, Glenn, I, I didn't really know you before this, but uh, I didn't really like didn't you really before. Like you, <laughs> but uh, now that I've got to know you, ah, you're you're dead on. Uh, you know? Adam McGar doesn't really have a filter. He'll tell no, you no, how no. it is. <laughs> but it seems like you know you go to the races, and it's not that you have a guard up, but you're sort of there to race. Yeah, you need to remember those yeah, people yeah. are your opponents. Yeah, yeah, and then you sort of go to these things, and you're all working together and chipping in. And, and uh, we, uh, yeah, I think the funny thing was none of us like. Like me and you didn't even really know yeah, each other yeah. beforehand. I was sort of friendly with Adam through the mountain bike, and I sort of knew Davy Conroy. Didn't really know Archie or Lara or anyone else. But I mean, after that yeah, week, yeah. like we're, we're still we were, uh, we were all a group best chat going like, like yeah, yeah. we're still we're still chatting away to each other, giving each other grief like so. Yeah, it was a really good weekend in terms of teamwork and Development, building the team. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then we then we came home after that, and that's how the UCI risks. Snowballs Andy Lay then started talking to me and he says, What about running the East Irish? And I was like, Well, I, what, what's all needed? And then we started the, the snowball of that there, and it mm-hmm. turns out you need about 10 grand to run a race. <laughs> so that was, I think, after that, then it was that October, was it we ran that? And that's how long it took. And but that was just stress the whole, whole way from, from yeah. right, right up to that. I think that. that Although it was a stressful event, it took a lot of effort to put on. That was a very successful event. Yeah. And it did inspire a lot of people to start thinking of maybe what they can do. You know, people from other clubs and 
of course, last year we had the announcement of the World Cup coming. Yeah, and that was then crazy. The Irish C2 before that, you know, Irish Cycle Cross was taken off. And then, of course, COVID wrecked everything. Yeah, the ball, the ball was rolling like. And then you've, ha- you've had a couple of good runs then at the Nationals as well, then at the, at the Cycle Cross. Ah, yeah, apart from two medals from junior, bronze and a gold. And then I was there last year again behind mm-hmm. Conroy and Chris McGlinchey, both. Both very very strong riders. I had a good battle with Darnell. It was a look. Got it in the end. He was he sort of was leading me for the most of the race, and then he sort of faded at the end. I think he might have had a few bike problems as well. But that was a bit of a running race, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a, that was a tough race. Like he lapped right up to like. Oh yeah, the boys who are usually top of the A race, like were getting lapped yeah. and pulling out. Like it was a crazy race, and. It, I think just because no one in Ireland had seen anything like it on home soil, yeah, we would experienced some likes of it at Valkenberg, but no one else had seen anything like that. Like, I think it came there was a lot of complaints. I know. Yeah, there was a lot of complaints, but the boys need to realise it's cross like. No, because I'd went it with I'd the back trouble obviously, and I'd went it and I was going. Usually, I love those conditions. Maybe not as much running as that. You know, plugging through the heavy stuff, and I was standing looking at it, going, "Yeah, I don't think I'm, I think I'm missing too, missing too much oh, here." You no, know? I, yeah, that was a. So you're third that, that year, and the, the Nationals then the year before that, where were they? I was down in Cork. I was Cork. a great set up with a big yeah, bridge yeah. over the road and all. Yeah, yeah. Very fast race. And how'd and you go there? I went balls out at the start, got on the way to Conroy, but that year he was just stronger than I was. I think I dropped back where did I end up in the end. Fifth, maybe? Fifth, yeah. Yes. I think it was fifth. Conroy and Monty had a good battle That's that right. one. Yeah, yeah. Darnell was third, and then we had good old Paul squeak in fourth. Yeah. He was he was going rightly that year now. Uh, he was going very well that year. He was going well uh, last year as well. But I, I just I don't think the national course suited him. No, he I hadn't, didn't. He hadn't been doing his running. He had a lot of corners. Actually, it was what was it a shamrock that they had? Yeah. And sort of out print at the top, and then after that, you had a like the bottom half of the field was just mm-hmm. like long straights. So oh, it was, yeah, it was a tough course. Like, and I think it got a lot of boys off guard and a lot of. Very strong. Lads me, didn't do too well. I mean, you yeah, had a good ding dong at the uh, Derry London Derry course, didn't you? Oh, that was. When was that? That was, that was, that was two th- years ago. That was two years ago. I went to Kelly's the night before. <laughs> <and> sort of <laughs> went. I'll go to sure, my excuse is you, sure you knocked me off going up the week line. That's right. I was on your yeah. wheel. And you got over it, and I didn't. And, and uh, the rest is history. Yeah, it was. It was. That was a good race. Ronan McLaughlin usually puts on a good show up yeah, there. Yeah, was good. With his crew from Foil CC, that's yeah, a good race. Brilliant show. One we big can get lap. Back to. Big lap of the park. Yeah, couple, big lap. Fast. Couple, yeah. A few wee nice technical sections as well. That's that was that was a very good course. Like cinder pitch at the bottom. Um, boards. I think Graham actually tried to overtake me on the boards. Just so I think someone wrecked themselves in the yeah, boards. Yeah, Graham. Yeah, 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 it was a bad way. Um. But yeah, we had a we had a good ding dong there, and and then after that, that was three years ago. So then my or two years ago, then my backs your back yeah hit the dust. That was it. Maybe that's what caused it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think it was already gone. We had a good ding dong at Mary Peters, me, you, and Graham. Mary Peters. Last two years ago. Oh, uh, Lady Dixon. Yeah, yeah. I I love Lady Dixon. Phoenix have a really good course there, really well run yeah. event. The likes of Johnny Bowes and those lads really put on a good show. That's me, I, you, Graham were tossing on. I see the we, whole race. I've had two good races there. The year before was me, Graham, and Monty. And yeah. Monty got the better of us. And then the year later, me, you, and Graham tussled the whole way. And then my back went the last lap. And sure, I laid sure. off. And then you got Graham in the sprint. I, that was they a good race. They had brought a, uh, a scaffolder and put a bridge up. Yeah. And it was causing a wee bit of chaos. Because yeah, there was a wee bit of concrete at the bottom of that bridge. Yeah. And you developed quite a lot of speed down the bridge. And you hit that concrete concrete in your wheel just slid from underneath you yeah, if you yeah, like Johnny Bogues they have a core team about them and they went to effort they put in because th- they had the steps to be honest I would, I would say Lady Dixon one of my favourite yeah, races yeah. I love Lady Dixon and they put a lot of effort in and you have, you have everything you have the spectator area you have the double pits and the top field and then you've got a single track and, and you've got the burgers yeah. Burgers, yeah, yeah, in the big tent put a good feed on so they do yeah, I, well that's the Nationals course they did run the Nationals yeah, Phoenix yeah. are, are yeah. very good at running the events so they are so yeah, we had a good ding dong there, and and then I don't think I did much after that race then. No, I didn't good. really see much from you. And all. But yeah, that was that was a quite a while ago. So talk to me about work. You were talking there a few minutes ago about um, well, Fazio. Fazio, yeah, um, final What's year now at Jordanstown. Um, it's very busy at the minute. Of course, this final year always is. Um, plan. I don't really know what the plan is. 
Um, I'll definitely be working for a year at least to get some experience part of me under my belt. Um, usually you just go straight in the NHS and do sort of your rotations through the different areas. Um, so yeah, I'll get the degree finished, get out in the world of work for a year, get some savings behind me and then we'll just see where it takes me. Cool but I don't think, uh, I'm definitely not done with the cycling to say yeah. the least. But yeah. I do want to get a wee bit of work under under my belt because you can't cycle forever. You no, that's you it. need to grow up there, to get a job sometime. There's a lot of people sort of think that they're going to be this pro and there's no harm in, in dreaming and trying it but you sort of yeah. have to have a... And a few boys are capable of that but yeah. not even the top boys are, you know, apart from one or two are like really retiring after that. You know, yeah, people yeah. are always going to work after that and I think what a lot of young lads need to be told is that your education is most important. Yeah, yeah. You know, get get your GCSEs or your A-levels or even if you want to your degree behind you and then see what you can do because, you know, once you've got those things behind you, they'll, they'll, stand, they'll stand by you for the rest yeah. of your life. Not not do what I do and miss your GCSEs and, <laughs> and, and go and race the World Championships. Uh, well, you're doing all right for yourself. So back in 2000. Uh, education isn't for everyone, of course. You know, uh-huh. there's plenty of other routes in to get a, get a good job. Without selling your soul to your textbook. Yeah, that's it. And tell us this, I put the, the first point down. Did you ever sell the bikes? Sold all the bikes. Yeah. Um, I have never seen more interest in bikes. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it's I bit two TCRs up, mine and my sister's. Both of them were gone in, within a week, and I still had 20 or 30 people asking about them so, from then yeah. on. And I mean, I had a guy last week messaged me, one of my mates, asking me if I still had the TCR. Seriously? The amount of people I had to turn down. The McCombies they look after you well with the bikes don't you yeah we get the McCombies look after us very well I have to be very thankful the Emily's looked after very, us very well for a well, few years now the latest equipment and stuff and mm-hmm. yeah I think that's like I sort of look after the guys here uh, I know in, in fairness to everyone that comes here and I work after them none of them take the hand out of you and it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a sort of it's a sort of thank you you know Right about with my name on your back, there's a bit of discount, and you know what? Yeah, it's a sort of it's sort of the mutual agreement. You know, you get your support from your sponsor, but you need you know you wear the kit, you do well in the races, yeah. you work hard at training, and you conduct yourself well as a rider. There's a lot to be said about that as well. Yeah, because then so you came to us and you worked with us with the Nuri three day. That was a good setup as well. Mm-hmm, I think. That started from riding cross worlds together. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, we, I think we, what it started with was just joking about you, yeah, yeah. you ride the three day with me, and then a few months down the line, you're like, here, do you actually want to ride the three day? Yeah. And I think before that, I'd done one road race in my life, and I was like, you know what? Um, certainly, yeah, yeah. get a bit of experience on my belt, and We're did big. I ride in it like? Was yeah, it? you. I sort of tied your hands one of the days because I was up the road. You went up the road and I had to sit up. Yeah. And, Team orders. And then I came backwards with the black smoke out of me and then you went across. But was it, you know, I sort of said, you look, you haven't done much road racing. Ride around this and see how you, you, you get on. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I knew you enjoy, enjoyed it and you enjoyed the crack more than anything mm-hmm. as well because there was no pressure on you. Yeah. Um, we had big look as well. I had big look choices there. Yeah, too. yeah. yeah. That, was, that was a good race. I ended up getting third in the last stage in overall. Like, That's right. It didn't, it did all right, like, but there was a few strong boys there that year, the likes of Adam Ward. Adam Ward was going PJ well. PJ Diggin was going yeah, very yeah. well. And then the likes of Bingo and Des Woods, they were also yeah. riding very well. Yeah, Drew yeah. McKinley too. You sort of get well the near like I've that was the first time I'd done the nearly three day, but you sort of see the 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 history is that one year a vet will go well and then the following year a junior will go well sort yeah. of in between. Um but yeah it was it was it seems to be that the nearly three day has seen a lot of good riders come through yeah yeah come through the works side of the likes of Jake Gray and Ben Walsh have all um yeah. done very I think well. Monty won one year as well, he rode off the the front. Uh, Monty's won most things. Yeah, yeah, well yeah, it's true. In his um, day. So yeah. You had guest ridden for us there that, that weekend and that was it was good and then I think you went and did a few more after that. But what about the national road scene? Have you have you rode it? I rode it twice. Uh rode it when they were up in Derry, London Derry there. Oh yeah, yeah. Did I, I didn't do too well that one. I was spat very early, like I think it was a big shock to the system. And then I rode them in October there. Did alright, made a round this time, finished, uh Nationals are always a very hard race because you know you've all the top riders who you don't usually ride against. You usually ride in the continent, and the pro riders coming back. You know it is a very tough race, and I think it'll take me a few years. You know, to sort of sort yes. of get into it and start doing a wee bit better. But um, it's definitely a good race to to be doing because it's long and it's hard, and it'll stand by you. And you're interesting, yeah. If you can get around the 
round it and then race the last bit. Yeah, if you can get round, if you can get round at the sharp end of national champs, you can get round the sharp end any race yeah, in the yeah. country. Yeah, and then you have a couple of other big races there, which all sort of had all sort of class of nationals as like your your big goal, and then mm-hmm. there was one or two after. Maybe not, they're not as big now, but the likes of the Shea Elliott. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel those ones that are including like it, the nationals here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I haven't done too many of them before. What my main targets are usually road champs through Ulster and through the north. Yeah. Saying that I've only done them all once because I'm, I'm sort of still new to this whole road thing, but I still think what my plan would be for this year, if there is any sense of normality, would be to do the Tour of the North, the Tour of Ulster and Nationals, and then in the summer, look more towards the off-road sort yeah. of thing. And you're doing a bit of mountain biking at the minute then? I train in a way with the mountain bike as well. That you sort of said when you get out on the mountain bike. I know, I've been on to you to get out. Um, it helps you break up the winter, it keeps your skills up, it keep, you know, it's, it's another form of bike riding, It's it can only do good things for you. I yeah. think if you want to be racing the mountain bike, you need to be training on it yeah. pretty consistently to keep to keep the handling up and keep the skills up. You know, it's a completely different sort of racing to the road, so you definitely need to be consistent in your mountain bike training as well. Yeah, because I've done a few, I think I did the mountain biking a lot, was it last, not the season there, not the COVID year, but the year before, and I just got a land of a mountain bike. Mm-hmm. And did maybe two weeks training, sort of went to the Irish Champs and just got my eyes opened. Yeah. Got more of my eyes open. But um <laughs> and then spent another good week on the on the mountain bike and the following weekend went to the Ulsters and was a completely different person just because I'd spent so much time mm-hmm. mountain biking and getting used to the bike as such as supposed to just jumping on it and thinking you're gonna Aye, not clean the, up but you know that's the thing, like some boys might think, Oh, I'm really good in the road, I could come across the mountain bike but th- they're very different sports. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I think the best thing to do if you're a youngster is to focus on the mountain bike first. Because yeah. it's a lot easier to transfer your skills from mountain bike to the road than it is to go from the road to the mountain bike. A lot of that's like a lot of people have done the whole mountain biking up through to maybe a certain maybe up to junior and mm-hmm. then dip their toe in. And that in my view it's worked for like ninety percent of, yeah. of people that most come of the across. top riders in the country. Of some sort of mountain bike background, the likes of Chris McGlinchey, Lindsay, Lindsay Watson, and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean even Monty as well yeah. came from the mountain bike. Like so, yeah, I think it's def- it's a brilliant way to develop your intensity. You know, it's a it's an hour or an hour and a half flat out, and it's a brilliant way to develop your bike handling. Like skills. you had the whole, you know, guys maybe thinking that my, mountain bikers thinking that road men are sort of like you know. Lycra guys and all this here, but I think that's all sort of yeah. gone now. You I know mean, what I mean? Either either discipline, they're both hard men. Yeah, yeah. In their own right, like yeah, yeah. And I think there's a lot more respect between road and mountain bike riders now. I suppose, I suppose the mountain mountain bikers are probably looking. All you have to do is train for like three hours a day, and like some of the races that McGlinchey won at the start, mm-hmm. he was just literally riding away on his own. Yeah. And like you were hearing reports of him coming through, and he was just like, yeah, he took off at the start, and he just rode away on his own. And, He's probably just saying, I need three hours training flat out, and that, that's what he's and done. I think you know? once you come to the higher end of the road racing, tactics play yeah, a, lot, a more. lot more. And I think once you come across from the likes of mountain bike like I did, that's where most your your learning will be, yeah, yeah. Is, is how to ride a road race. You know, you don't just ride it flat out the whole time. Yeah. You know, not everyone can be Chris McGlinchey and ride off the front line. Yeah, I've done mountain bike races when you've got into the first corner, the first tower pin or whatever, first in the fire track, and that, that's it. Race is over. You just have to that's ride like t- TT mode. Yeah. And that's it. Where road races, well... It's a lot more strategic. Yeah. And Sprint finish, yeah. In mountain bike, the strongest man will always run. Yeah. Unless, you know, he gets a puncture or something, but usually the strongest man will win. In road, it's not necessarily the strongest man. It could yeah. be the smartest man. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's your thought for the day. So it is. I think we'll wrap it up there, Thomas. I want to say thank you for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. Wish you all the best for um, this season that hopefully comes across. Hopefully catch you in the road. Well, hopefully not. But um, (laughs) we don't know what what, what way it's going to be. I'll have to give um, Archie a shout here and see if we can talk to his coach. See if he can work us in his schedule. He did another podcast with somebody else, didn't he? Uh, He was sharing something on Instagram. So there seems to be a few voices. I had the shoe doctor on last week, but unfortunately my uh, internet connection here is crap, so it didn't work. But Thomas, thank you, mate. Thanks for coming in. I really appreciate it. All right, Glenn. Cheers. Bikini Podcast.